Hello, everyone, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of the test and measurement industry. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to dive deep into some of the industry's biggest topics. I sat down with Dr. Diego Robolino to discuss the impact that eco-friendly transformers might have on the industry and how the testing might need to change accordingly. So let's find out what's up with Dr. Diego Robolino. Dr. Diego Robolino, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you, Darcy? I'm fantastic. And it's great to have you on today. I'm very excited Thank for this you. One. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. A little bit rainy outside, but it's great to be here. Absolutely. You wouldn't expect anything different from England weather, would you? I know that the weather can change pretty fast. So. <laughs> All seasons in one day. <laughs> All seasons in one day, yes. <laughs> well, as you know, we always start the podcast with our power-up questions. They're to get your brain thinking. And so we can learn a bit more about you. Are you okay, ready? I'm already. Don't be nervous. <laughs> so question number one, how long have you been in the electrical industry? In the electrical industry, I've been for over 25 years. Okay. So you've got a bit of time under your belt. Experienced. Um, I started working in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I went into, you know, from from what I graduated on the electric drive and automation, I had to go into power engineering, and then we were into, you know, facilities, construction, oil and gas, downstream operation. And then I moved to the U.S. to get my Ph.D. And after my Ph.D., I've been working for Mega for the last 13 years. Mm, wow. A question number two, it's a this or that, coffee or tea? Coffee. Oh, was that a hard choice? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and question number three, what is your favorite song? Oh, there are so many. Darcy, that, that, is, a, that is a tricky question because if you look into my Spotify, <laughs> you will find music from the and the folk all the way to heavy metal, and all the way to some... Uh, You've got to pick just know. one, though. But I can pick only one. Um, so I would say that there's there's a beautiful song about uh, Ecuador, which is called Mi Lindo Ecuador. Lovely. We'll give that a listen after we've finished. Uh, today, we're not here to talk about Diego's favorite song. <laughs> we are here to talk about eco-friendly transformers. Everybody is trying to become eco-friendly in their respective industries. And I think the electrical industry is doing the exact same thing. So in the context of transformer, what does being eco-friendly mean? There's a big importance now into the eco-friendly transformer. And there's uh, lots of discussion about it. What, one of the things that is changing, for example, is the type of liquid insulation that we use now. And going from mineral oil into ester oils is one of the steps of moving into this eco-friendly transformer. Mm -hmm. So with the current transformers we have, what is the damage being done? Well, if, if we go back in history a little bit about the, the mineral oil, for example, right? We used to have mineral oil with PCBs, right? Which was a little bit of a risk, mm. right? For your health. And, and that has been already eliminated yeah, from the map, gone. right? So it, there might be still some transformers in the field with PCBs, but they're very well controlled and, and very well identified, mm. okay? But going from there, now, if for whatever reason something fails inside your transformer, there is explosion and fire ignites, then the contamination that you will have because of that mineral oil to the soil, uh, the contamination to the air because the fire is going to be, you know, lots of gases, uh, the fire, the risk, uh, the explosion. So there's, there's many things that we're looking at trying to minimize the probability of fire, mm -hmm. right? the probability of spill with these new technologies. Can you just explain a bit further about what an eco-friendly transformer might look like? An eco-friendly transformer might look a little bit bigger than a regular transformer, mm -hmm. just because when we get now into these new ester fluids, for example, yeah. right, it's a different viscosity, it's mm -hmm. a different behavior a little bit. Um, for the cooling system, there might be different things. But basically, it's a still the electromechanical system 
is exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the physics of a transformer has not changed. Mm -hmm. right? What we need to understand is how this new fluid will flow actually inside the transformer, mm -hmm. how the viscosity, how the temperature will affect this. The, the other thing that is, is coming out here is um, not, not only eco-friendly because uh, of the liquid insulation, because there might be transformers that have no liquid insulation, right? So, so what impact does it have to switch to eco-friendly transformers? First of all, especially for distribution transformers, I, I think that the biggest customer right now for these eco-friendly devices are by far distribution transformers mm -hmm. because uh, these new fluids have been tested on, on those with uh, very good results, right? And the other side is that if you look, for example, at the pole-mounted transformer, right? Just hanging on the pole, right? On your neighborhood or, or somewhere else. There's no time for anyone to go and test those, mm. right? So if it fails, we need to minimize the damage, mm -hmm. right? So if it fails, we don't want to have a, a violent explosion. We don't want to have a spill of fluids that will contaminate the area where those were. So that is kind of the idea of going now into this eco-friendly, especially on the distribution transformer side. Mm -hmm. And whilst, you know, it's mostly positive news, I think within the industry it can be quite contentious because the transformers we have now are well established and we know a lot about them and how they should be tested. But obviously a new way of doing things comes with some unknowns. Can you kind of tell us your opinion on that? Well, more than unknown is what to expect in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years. You see that we have transformers right now under operation and they've been in service for 60 years. So we know exactly what the behavior is of you know, the existing technology. And these new technologies will open you know, different doors. Uh, we cannot expect to see the same results. And, and, and that is clear for everybody in the industry. We need to understand better how is this going in this aging process of the transformer and the service life of the transformer and how we better interpret those results. You know, the typical testing that we have been doing, you know, the physical chemical analysis, the dielectric analysis, how will that change? You know, there are many things like moisture in, in the liquid insulation. Uh, you cannot compare those two, you know, mineral or ester fluids are mm -hmm. two different two different uh, materials with different characteristics at all. Mm -hmm. You've spoken a lot about fluids, actually, but one thing you haven't touched on is dry type transformers. And I'm really interested to kind of hear a bit more about that. So would you just mind explaining to me kind of what well, they are? Thank you. Thank you for bringing me into mm -hmm. this uh, I just this thought topic. you hadn't said it yet, and I yes, want to know a bit more. Yes, yes. And they've been in my mind as well. One of the things that is interesting to talk about these eco-friendly things is imagine that tomorrow Darcy has to go to a rig, a drilling rig in the middle of the ocean, right? So you have an a, a, a oil extraction platform in the middle of the ocean. What kind of transformer would you like to have there? Mm -hmm. An eco-friendly or something that may burn and you are surrounded by it? Well, I think we know the know. answer to that one, don't we? <laughs> Safety first, always. Safety first. <laughs> and, and likewise, now that we're getting into renewable energy and we have these new windmills and we have these solar facilities, remote facilities most of the time, right? We cannot have something that creates higher risk. So we try to minimize the risk. So it it is common, not only the ester fluids, for example, but also the dry type transformers. And, and you, you, you're you bringing the topic uh, because this dry type transformer, even though it's 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 a good piece of equipment, of course, but now it doesn't have the luxury of the liquid insulation that is basically the, the information carrier, right? When the unit is in service, it's ideal to have, you know, the oil and you just open the valve, take a sample, bring it to the lab and, and do some analysis of what's going on inside that transformer. But being a dry type, yeah. You don't. This was going to be my next question because obviously we know that oil is kind of like the source of data and a lot of ways how you test and you can check the integrity. So on a dry type, how is that going to be possible? Well, think about it, right? We always kind of make a, 
uh, a comparative analysis saying like liquid insulation inside the transformer is like blood inside our bodies, right? So you can take a sample, you can take it to the lab, you can do some analysis, you will understand what's going on. Well, now you don't have it. Now you take, and now you need to take few cells from your skin, right? And take it to the lab. And, and that's more or less what we will be saying about dry type insulation, but you have paper insulation, you may have an, an encapsulated design where you're not gonna be able to take any kind of samples, mm -hmm. right? So there's other techniques. When we look into these dry type transformers, we can go a lot into uh, thermography. We can go into some static testing, right? Most of those don't have any, any uh, voltage regulation system or anything like that. So mo most of the testing is static. So your winding resistance, your fundamental testing, your uh, ratio testing, your uh, short circuit impedance, those are the basic and I would say most practical testing. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that, besides that, one of the things that is always uh, interesting to look at is for example, your tip up test, which is your power factor at different voltages. And also some advanced technologies when we look into, for example, partial discharges, yeah, mm -hmm. right? So you can go into partial discharges and you can look at the behavior, right, of your of the insulation when the transformer is actually energized. Mm -hmm. So becoming more eco-friendly is just paramount to the transformer industry to move forward. So in your opinion, can you just quickly summarize what you think the future of eco-friendly transformers looks like? As we grow in the industry with renewable energy, with uh, windmills, with solar panels, with uh, offshore platforms, yeah. right? We need to be socially conscious, right? We need to, again, respect mother nature and look at the best for our ecosystem. We have a wonderful ecosystem today. We don't know what we have for our kids or grandkids. Um, transformers, are making their part, right? We're yeah, walking play a huge together. Part in this. We're playing, mm. right? Together with the with the rest of the industry. We we look into the best condition and we as Megar look into that as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are a family, right? All Megar employees, we're a family. We build a, a great work relationship with our customers and we win, we want to keep that in the best way uh, in the best environment. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking to me all about that. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I think the future looks bright for eco-friendly transformers. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you about this ecology. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for coming on, Diego, and thank you for watching, and thank you for listening.